Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really a disloyal person. This is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Tuesday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe. At Cuse Militia on the socials, go there, join the militia. Sarah Cuse will host Wagner this Saturday at 5 p.m. You'll hear from us. We'll go over last week's picks. Give this week's picks. We'll hear your picks for the Wagner game and fan feedback. So, it's Wagner. And Wagner Seahawks. The Wagner Seahawks last played in 2018 and we'll go over all of that. But uh, a small montage to get us started from the uh, Wagner pregame or, or what do they call it? The Wagner pregame presser? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. All right. Which we listen to every week and we usually just give you our thoughts on whatever may come up. And like I always told you, that uh, the, the best parts usually Dino's is open. There's a couple little tidbits in here. Joe's got one that I forgot to add. He'll hit on that. Um, let's go ahead and listen to see what he had to say. You know, this game is a, is a, to me, this is a tricky game for us. And our team has to really stay locked in. I know that, I know that Tom's going to have his team ready to go. It just makes me want to think back to a similar situation when I was at an FCS school and and we went out and played a team in California that we were 21 point underdogs in 2013 and we beat them. And I want to say we beat them handedly. And that stuff happens. That's why the ball is not round. It bounces funny. And we need to stay locked in and understand that that stuff does happen. It's already happened a bunch of times around the country and we really don't want it to happen here in Syracuse, New York. So um, I hope the guys are listening and that they stay locked in and focus and we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that they do okay questions terry lockett will be done for the year what about a couple of the other guys in the secondary elijah clark was down Jahad carter we won't know about those guys until f- further evaluations throughout the week you know, we're averaging what? We're averaging losing a starter per game. And uh, the backups who are now starters have done a really, really good job based off the people that we're playing. But we're uh, starting with this week, you know, if we're going to continue to lose one a game, I don't know how that's going to look. I don't know how that crystal ball looks in the end. So am I concerned? Yes. But, uh, you know, the train's left and we can't put anybody else on it. So we're off and running. Rondé Gatson, it's his second straight game with over 100 receiving yards. What have you seen from him that's really, you know, elevated him to such a dynamic weapon in the offense? He is so cool. I mean, when you talk to him, it's like he his, he doesn't elevate. It. He's not a roller coaster. He's flatline, man. He's he is so cool. He just really doesn't get excited, and the the uh, the situation or the moment's not too big for him. He knows how to catch the ball. He knows how to run routes. He's been there before. He doesn't care if he's doing it in his backyard and his dad's throwing it to him or if he's, on a, he's in the dome and there's 40,000 people in there, which we need to get. Okay, so uh, he's just a really cool customer, and uh, what he does on the practice field, he does in the game. He's consistently good. All right, so, Joe, real quick, uh, I told you what I had set up there, and... Um, I had left out. So when, when I listen to the, whenever I listen to the pregame presser, it is today, Tuesday, every Tuesday at around nine o'clock is when I have quiet time in the office and I put it on and listen to it while I'm working. And I probably had to restart that thing six or seven times today and pause it many more than that. So I wrote down what I remembered and Joe's 
interest was piqued by some of the punter talk. So what did you want to add before we get into um, what he had to say in the montage show? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, they were talking about how they were recruiting internationally and how we have like two guys named Maximilian on our team, a couple guys from Germany, right? Australia, stuff like that. And um, they asked about, you know, Max von Marburg from your favorite place in uh, Australia. Um, and uh, he just talked about how good he was. And he talked about how because growing up uh, rugby you know, uh, player, different type of football over there. He said that there's that he he said he he compared him to a pitcher in baseball that he could kick the ball so many different ways and put different spins on it and stuff like that. They could make it really difficult for a punt returner or somebody to, you know, a return team to do something with. Um, but then he alluded to the fact that he kind of has to get the blessing from, you know, the special teams coach in order to do that. Uh, but I just thought it was a little, it was interesting that he brought that up, but yet still made it, you know, sound like he's been kicking it normally, like a normal punter, almost like there's like a trick in the bag that we're like waiting to use down the road on some other teams or something like that. But he basically was saying that he, can use his foot with the football like a pitcher can use with his hand in a baseball and how they can throw different ways and stuff like that. So something we haven't seen, I thought it was interesting and um, I guess we'll wait and see. Yeah, that's interesting. Always, always kind of interesting to see Australian punters because they just do things a little bit different. Right. And, and mm-hmm. he's right. That's a, that's a good point. And I do remember that now and it's Wagga Wagga. <laughs> Wagga Wagga. Australia. Wagga Wagga. Your favorite place. New South Wales. New uh, South Wales. Wagga Wagga, yeah. New South Wales. It's, My favorite punter. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, look, coach begins the press conference talking about, look, look, we're not going to see past this game um, as if it's just some scrubs, even though it kind of is. And we'll get into that. But... It's the quintessential like trap game thing, right? And he wants to make sure that his players know, hey, look, anything can happen. There's been plenty of upsets this year in college football, and we've talked about a couple of those, and especially leading up to this game. This is the one game where you know you've got to get control of it early, get out to a a, a big lead, uh, and use this game to uh, maybe get some of those new starters some really good significant reps, which. Um, is going to be essential um, going into the next two weeks of practice after this game before NC State. Likely to be, who knows? I mean, who who knows what happens leading up to that NC State game in the week that we're off, right? So it's going to be interesting to watch um, NC State and in, in just ACC football in general leading up to that game because it could be, it could either it could be a bigger game than what we might think. I guess is what I'm saying. We we just yep. don't know, right? So right. Um, um, yeah, quintessential trap game, Joe. Uh, trying to keep the guys focused. Coaches always try to, and, and everybody should. Everybody should, if especially as athletes. Fans is different. We can do whatever the hell we want. We, we can, you know what I'm saying? Because it doesn't matter. Yeah. We're not playing the game, right? But uh, a little bit of an issue, and that is uh, Terry Lockett, and in just another one out for the year. Uh, like Coach said, four games, four. Um, four starters lost and Chris Elmore and Stefan Thompson in the first game. And then Isaiah Jones, who's an up and coming receiver lost him against Purdue and then Terry Lockett. So uh, a star on the line and just uh, a big loss. And you gotta just hope that, okay, is this, is this out of the way? Uh, I did see the depth chart for uh, the Wagner game. And it looks like, um, Dar- Kevin, uh, Kevon Darton is going to, he's in there. Okay. At the top, Derek McDonald, w- which we've been waiting to see Jihad Carter, uh, Elijah Clark. So, and you know, I don't know, like you said, Joe, before we came on, it could be, you know, a status thing. Like they are cleared to play, but we're going to see what happens type thing. But nevertheless, a good game to get some of these younger guys, some some good reps if we can if we can get out to a little bit of a lead but no doubt the injury bug hitting the Syracuse football team something something bad and it's unfortunate and it um it's a little discouraging as a fan you just hope that everybody can stay healthy and 
We talked about, you know, why is Gare Trader holding on to the ball so long and running, you know, running backwards. And I mean, I mean, who knows, right? So we yeah. definitely can't lose a Schrader, a Tucker, you know, a Michael Jones, a Marlo Wax, you know, Okachukwu, right. right? You know, I mean, any any more of these is going to be, it's just it's starting to pile up and it could get more and more devastating. Yeah, they, yeah, that's the situation where we knew coming in with the defensive line that that was going to be an issue, right? And just so far, it seems to me like that's where it's hit us the most. Uh, Stephon Thompson, you know, we play a 3 3 5, but a lot of times we have a linebacker up there on one of the edges rushing or in there in the mix uh, with a running and pass rush. And that was Stephon Thompson. And Terry Lockett was probably, you know, as far as D tackle, one of the leaders that was there that we could count on um and also i always thought that if in a pinch we did lose somebody on the defensive line and we needed to add some depth there then they sh- could have put chris elmore there like they had before in the past um and now all three of them are gone and now we're looking on down a depth chart of super super young guys um and guys that not aren't necessarily heavy enough or possibly physical physically ready enough to help us against certain teams so um that whole that whole position that whole area that took a big took a big hit and i wouldn't be surprised if we don't see some some different move movers over there you know maybe getting some dns in there uh, maybe seeing dennis jack west jr maybe josh huff the running back that moved there a little bit more that was was Um, one dom mentioned on on twitter i believe so we haven't seen a ton of burn from him and be a good opportunity and you you know the good news is is that they've got you can't look past Wagner but i'm saying you, you know you've got a solid 2 weeks to prepare and that's going to be big going into NC state mhm so i mean you know we look at you know the buys at the beginning of the year for basketball and, and football and mostly football cuz you get the one and see where it lands and it seems like it could have landed, couldn't have landed any better. Honestly, it's going to be a gauntlet from here on out. But yeah, I mean, look, you get one. It's got to split somewhere. The problem is, is the schedule that was handed to us is just stacked. I mean, it's stacked from start to finish, and we got through the first part. But the first part, compared to the second part, is <laughs> is easy. It's level one. <laughs> I mean, if you want to compare it to that, but it's not level one. It's not level one, but it is compared to what we got slated in the second half of the year. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we talked about it, and it's it's the expectations, right? We, we blew away our expectations so far as Syracuse fans go. Um, there's only 21 undefeated teams left, and out of them, there's only been two teams that have won th- and then three of their games or three of their wins have been from against Power 5 teams, and it's us and Florida State. So, I mean, we still, at the end of the day, this might be the easier part of the schedule, but beating Louisville, Purdue, and Virginia isn't something to, you know, be ashamed of. I mean, right. And again, we can sit here and argue about whether or not we should be 4-0 and who beat who and, you know, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, we're 4-0. Right, and who cares? Well, we care. But it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we're not winning. I- I'm telling you, last year... It- and it's totally hypothetical, I know. But we're not winning those close games against Virginia and Purdue last year. It's just, it's just it wasn't that type of team last year. This is a resilient. No, no. This is a resilient and we didn't, team. and we didn't win close games against Clemson and Wake Forest last year. But we competed. Right, the Wake Forest um, game. Yeah, I know that was. And, and then, the, then the other part that that I was thinking about today, that kind of, you know, that I'm worried about is. Again, when we, we, we usually start seeing the injuries kind of build up a little bit. Um, we know that our depth isn't comparable to some other teams in the conference. And, you know, Dino Babers' no record in November is not good. Um, and so that's really, to me, you know, what's nerve-wracking as well. Because historically, we would come out off of a bye, play NC State hard, play Clemson hard, and then possibly play a Notre Dame hard, and then after that, it's just all downhill from there. Because you know, whether we win or lose those games, we might look impressive, and oh, hey, look, Syracuse lost by three to Clemson, or you know, stuff like that. But then it gets to November, and something happens, whether it's the depth or whatever. And I, I just I don't know 
but it's just been just historically we haven't been good in November. Um, minus maybe one year with Dungey, but um, that's the the other hurdle that I'm that I'm worried about because traditionally with the Dino Babers teams, um, since COVID year, we compete up to November, and then it all kind of just implodes. Right. No, well, we have a month for that. Uh, <laughs> well, right. I understand that, but it's still <laughs> something playing. that came in my head because just in case, you know. Yeah. No, I get it. Uh, the the last thing on the list here, uh, um, Aronde Gadsden getting his due, and uh, Coach mentioned he's just a calm, cool guy. And I'll tell you, I watched the Mob podcast last week after the Purdue game, and Gadsden was on there. And dude, this dude is all chill, man. He is. He's a cool character. And, and, and uh, like Coach said, man, he's just a work. He's a workhorse out there, and you can see it. Uh, I think I think we talked last episode. He's gotten even 300 yards through four games, leading all receivers uh, for the Orange, and you know, yeah, uh, just an impressive guy. And um, I just look to see him just become a become the 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 main target in in the force for what defenses prepare for. Um, yeah. Just think about when. You know, we get Tucker rolling again and Garrett rolling and, and, and then you have you add Gadsden in the mix. I mean, you, you become it's just another level, man. It's just another level because he's a it deep is. ball threat. He's a big guy. He can catch the freaking ball. I mean, it's he's another he adds another dimension to the offense. Well, he can run routes with his size too. So yeah, I mean he's a tough guard. He's a tough guard in a situation where if teams want to stop the run there's going to be a lot of man-to-man situations, right? Um, he might not have the blazing speed, but you don't need it when you have the other skill sets that he does. So, um, yeah, I, I remember there's dude, we have talent as far as in the receiver room. I know. Um, it's needs, crazy because it needs, was one of but, our but, concerns but, last year was like, oh, it's good. what are we going to do with receivers? Remember, we talked about this. Right, but like, they're still making mistakes. There's Some I of them are still that. having pr- trouble getting open and stuff like that, but, but a lot of them are young. Um, I'd like to see a little bit. I mean, Devon Cooper, it, 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 he impresses me, and I know he can do. I've seen what he can do. Um, and Trevor Pena, I mean, he's just the guy just makes plays. Yeah, uh, he's, gotta find, he's awesome. Got to find ways yeah. to get the, the the ball to Alford. Um, but there's still other guys even on the bench. You know, Amari Hatcher, um, super impressed with with his tape, with his spring game. Um, hoping that at some point this season he's going to be able, and you know, with Wagner and the bye coming up, maybe. Maybe he gets a shot. Maybe the second team gets in there in the second half. Del Rio Wilson's got there slinging it to some receivers that are possibly ready to break out and maybe get some more burn. So we got some. I mean, as far as receivers go, the best is yet to come as far as, I mean, you might not be, you might not hit the pinnacle this season, but, you know, these years coming up, we're going to have some good receivers. And then you add in the NIL <laughs> with uh, Adam Weitzman's uh, little um, – you know, bid that he talked about as far as what he's willing to pay for from his company. Like the for company's somebody, willing uh, to pay for for somebody for two to players, represent him. One one football, one basketball player, right? Yeah. Well, um, he specifically said five star. Five star so, football and basketball. Yeah. With a big yeah, so, with a big payout. So a million a piece is right. what it was. Yeah. So a year. So, I mean, realistically, that is going to bring is going to draw some people. I know that there's some fine print and some things and some legalities. They got to make sure that everything's good. But I mean, from what I'm reading from other other schools and those collectives, they're doing the same thing. He just came out and was just out in the open about it. He wasn't going to hide it. It, it, so, it. Is everything that went on before NIL, except yeah. for there's no curtain. The curtain's mm-hmm. been lifted. It's all the same stuff. Yep. <laughs> we yep, can just see much. how the sausage is made now. And and like I said, <laughs> back back in the off season when we were talking about this, or maybe at the end of last year, I said, look, you know, um, um, what's his name was trying to play? Um, good guy, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Morals and Mr. High Ground. Wild and, Hack. Wild Hack. And I'm like, dude, that's not going to work. You're going to sink the program. If you want to, if you're not going to play by the rules everybody else is playing by, it's going to, you're going to, it, you find another job, and I'm not trying to be rude or be provo- provocative or anything, but you got to get down in the mud. And Weissman is 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 a muddy guy, 
Okay, he's gonna get down in the mud, and God bless him for it. He's been he's oh, been yeah. huge for the basketball team. I don't care about the people he brings in to watch games, but he has done things, in in it's out of the out of just his fandom that he does it. It's it's you know what I mean. It's for his it's love, amazing. It's his love for the orange. He's got the money to sling around, and by God, he's slinging it. And I'll tell you, yeah. keep slinging it. That's my kind of guy. Keep slinging it, right. buddy. Yep, that's uh, how B, that's how Dino Babers talked about it too. He talked about it in the press presser. Yeah, yeah. He was so. I mean, that was that was pretty good too. Um, and I know that this whole thing was about Gadsden, so we can close with that. And like, I have to watch that that podcast. But he's a calm, cool, collective guy. I believe he's a redshirt freshman. So sophomore. Um, I think. We got some years. We got some years for him, right? I think so, he's a, I think he's a so- straight sophomore. Is he? Did he play enough last year? I don't uh, know. It's, it's um, um, I'll, I'll, I'll check, but I remember looking when I looked up his stats last last episode. But shout out, hey, thought. shout out to that podcast though, because it's you know it's not a they're not going to sit on their their podcast and talk about what we talk about because I don't really think that they can speculate and give away their game plan, right? So that's sure. not their type of show. Um, but if you want to, you know, get an insight on. It's a fun podcast. Guys. It's it's it's, it's a, oh yeah, yeah, you get an insight on the guys. Yeah. You get an insight about how tight they are as a group. Um, and it's just it's it, it's it's a fun part. It's a fun podcast. It is. Uh, one more thing that Coach did say is that is that Gadsden, you know, whether he's slinging in the backyard with his pops, or he's doing it in front of forty thousand people in the dome. Well, we hope to get forty thousand. We need to get there. Coach said we need to get there. And mm-hmm. guys, we got to get there. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I mean, I will beat a dead horse, but I'm not going to right now. All right, the all-time mm-hmm. series between Wagner and Syracuse sits at 2-0 and in favor of the Orange. The last meeting between the two, as I mentioned earlier, a 62-10 win for Syracuse. Dungy, 23-32 for 218 yards, five touchdowns, and one interception. Mo Neal led Russian with 71 yards on nine carries. Jarvion Howard, 69 yards on 13 carries. And Cisco, Andre Cisco, with two interceptions. Um... In the two games between the two teams, Syracuse South scored the Seahawks 116 to 10. That's a lot. That's a lot. No. Uh, yeah, uh, so y'all know that I look around, I try to find whatever I can from opposing uh, players' blogs and things like that. Well, there isn't much of anything. So uh, all we have is in front of us. And I guess, you know, we'll just rip through it here. The Seahawks right now, they're 0 3. They got losses to Fordham. Fordham is 3 and 1. Uh, lost to Rutgers, they're three and one, and St. Francis on homecoming day for Wagner, and uh, St. Francis is two and two. The total through the three games, 141 to 45. Okay, they got a senior quarterback, Nick Kargman, who is averaging 152 yards a game, four touchdowns, and four interceptions to go along with that. Uh, running back Ricky Sproul, dude. <laughs> I was, I saw this name and I'm like, Ricky Sproul, Ricky Sproul. Was he, was there not another Sproul back in the day? Did he play for the Chargers? Are they related? How come I couldn't find this? Do you know what I'm talking about? Anyway. It's a bunch of Sproul. I mean, there was a Sproul that played linebacker for us. Okay. Well, maybe that, that could be it too. Uh, 3.7 yards of carry on 31 attempts uh, for a total of 116 yards in three games. Uh, defensively, they average one takeaway a game. But, you know, um, they're allowing 500 yards <laughs> of offense per game and 47 points mm-hmm. per game. So uh, for what it's worth in uh, those keeping track at home, that's also a lot. Uh, so, mm-hmm. Joe, for me, I just want to see, like I, like I talked about earlier, I kind of just want to see like a globetrotter type win without, you know, anyone getting injured as well yeah. as, you know, you know, as we go and start to get ready for NC State and begin this slate of games, get some of the guys with always healthy and, and ready f- for in the next two weeks following the game. And um, just that's pretty much it, man. Get out of there. Give me show me some show me some tricks and uh, blow this blow this team out in the water and, and, and take the two weeks to prepare for NC State. That's what I'm looking for. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. Um, that's, I mean, Wagner hasn't won since before COVID. So, well, I, mean, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. They've Thank lost you. 23 straight games. I think it spans back to 2019. Uh, and when you look at the teams they played, Fordham at Rutgers and St. Francis, Pennsylvania, I mean, they've, like you said, they've got outscored. It's been underwhelming. Rutgers beat them 66 to 7. Um, they only scored seven against St. Francis, uh, Pennsylvania, and I have to believe that we have a better defense than them. Uh, so, 
realistically, yeah, I think that that's exactly kind of what we just we talked about um, in the prior podcast. I think it's a situation where if players don't need to play, they're not going to. Um, and you know, when we alluded to this being a time where you know where our offense has to evolve, our team has to evolve. We can't just keep doing the same thing on tape, you know. And I don't think we're worried about that on the defensive side. I think that you know we're worried about that more on the offensive side. And I know Garrett Schrader. Uh, he had a, an interview today where he teased about a new plan um, and, and that some changes were coming. And I know Dino Babers had alluded to that as well, that they got to look at some stuff and that there's probably going to be some changes. So uh, this is just the time to do it. They got through it. They got 4-0. Now they can take a breath of fresh air. Play against Wagner, like I said, I, I, I believe – I have to believe we're going to have to be somewhere around 50 to 55-point favorites. Um so it's just a team that just can't compete with us, and I don't expect it to be close. Um, but just like you, it's just one of those things. Like no, get, no getting kicked out for targeting to where because that's going to stem all the way. You know what I mean? If you get a targeting oh, call yeah, the second go, half, Wagner, that's going to go all the way to first half. NC State, it's mm-hmm. going to last two and a half, three weeks, right? Mm-hmm. And and just no, you know, and, and injuries. That's really what you want to look at. No and, and stupid kinda, play at all. No, the, no unnecessary play. It's not unnecessary. There's no reason you don't have to get. You don't even have to act like that against this team. This right. is a show up, play classy, expect to win, pretend like you've been there before, and then get out of there as clean as possible. Um, with also trying to get as much experience to the younger guys in the depth as, as we can. You know, maybe try a little things, but don't show everything. Don't put anything on tape that could right. hurt you in NC State, um, and then then get to get to that that bye week and I would you know, be playing ch- change some stuff add some packages you know figure out a couple different things that NC State's not going to even think about or haven't seen on tape and you know we'll see where, we see where it rolls um 3 weeks from now yeah so i mean like you know basically play like a NFL preseason yeah. type game i right? mean keep your cards close to your chest play basic football and and just see what you can do with it, right? And get the rotation. I mean, that's, get the rotation. And that's set. what it's going to be. Right. And you do that, and you're going to win 64. To we might blow them out. We might not give up anything against this team. I mean, they're not. They're averaging 15 points a game with the the schedule that we just talked about. They're averaging giving up 500 yards a game and 226 on the ground. So, um, I think that this is is really um, going to be a situation again where we can kind of get our confidence back on the offensive line. You know. Maybe just get back to the running game a little bit early, get some confidence in the offensive line and in Sean Tucker, and get that back. Score early, often, early get him out of there. Right. And then second half, like Carlos Del Rio Wilson and all the other guys, LaQuinn Allen, Juwan Price, let those guys come in with some of the receivers that may still need help and then some new guys that, that are ready to show what they can do. And again, too, we know we have offensive linemen that – Behind us, I mean, Dino alluded to seven, eight guys, right, in in the fall that they were going and, and trying to figure out. So there's a few behind those starters that showed showed some promise even in the fall. And if they have, have made any type of advancement and they can prove it in the next three weeks, then we might see a different offensive line come NC State. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, all right. Shout out to Wagner, too. Shout out to Wagner. Shout out to Wagner. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. No, they. Uh, it's funny. Uh, there was a um, a guy from Henniger that I, you know, after college and this, this and that, he um, he went to Wagner. Chris Turner. Okay. And uh, 2003 to 2006, and he is the um, all-time leader in catches, uh, touchdown passing, touchdown catches, and um, and passing uh, receiving yards. My dad. So. My dad graduated from Henniger. Oh, okay. A yeah, little fun fact for you. A little fun fact. Yeah. yeah. And Wagner, uh, they uh, recruited me. but Did they really? Decided not to, yeah. It's in Staten Island? Is that where it is? Yeah, I probably didn't get in. My grades probably weren't good enough. So. Yeah, you're not that smart. It's okay, Joe. I think you're, <laughs> I, I think you're smart. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. It's time to hear from you, the loud mouths from the loud house. All right. It's that time of the week in the show where 
Uh, I'm locked out of my Facebook account, so Joe, you're gonna have to scour that. Did you put Did you put the post up? That's the first question because I never got a confirmation from you. Uh, one, two. <clears throat> it's that time of the show where we put out the um, final score predictions for Wagner, uh, and you fill those out, and we talk about them here. I'll rip through some of these. Like I said, I really like them with a a little bit of flair. If you could, that would be great. Also, get to your Android or Apple iTunes store and download the freaking Spotify live app and put it on your phone. Sign up for notifications. All it takes is an email address, a username, and a password, and you are hooked up. Follow us at Houston Militia there. Sign up for the notifications. When uh, we go live, you will get a notification. And um, we already got some guys in there. We got the norms in there. We got Matt. We got Ant. And we got and we got Dom in there. Okay, perfect. Um, let's get some of this started. Joe, you're blank. Are you looking on Facebook? Yep. Okay. Yes. Dom, while well, we got Dom in the room, he's got 52 to three. Second half, we'll see Del Rio and LaQuint Allen light it up. Also hoping for Josh Huff, as I mentioned earlier. I, I thought that was him that mentioned that. Um, get some time on the D line. Uh, love you, big general, he adds. So, yeah, Joe mentioned that, and I know he's not on Twitter, so he didn't even see it. But um, I hope to see a lot of guys get some damn burn and um, rest, some of these, rest some of these starters, get some of these young faces out there and get them, um, and get them some reps. So, um, time out. <laughs> what happened? Oh, we're still in there. We're still in there. Sorry, guys. Hey, so what's the deal here? I I thought we exited. Do you want me to? Do you want me to read all of them, or do you want me to only read? I mean, what do you want me to do? No, you can just grab the ones that look good. That's what I do. Uh, I'll do a couple more. You find a couple. I'll do a couple more. Forty-nine to seven at all things SU. Get the starters out in the fourth. I really hope for them to be out before the fourth. That's what we did against um, UConn and. um, I expect this game to be a little bit more of a easy run than than even that game. So uh, look to get everyone else healthy over the bye. Yeah, that's the big thing, as we've talked. And, uh, you know, we'll see what can happen. It looks like everybody's pretty much on the mend that who, who has not been counted out for the year. So at Mr. C bio teacher, 47 to 13 orange defense scores twice I like that. Tucker gets 120 yards, perhaps more predicting that. Um, who is this? Oh, Garrett Williams. He uses his Twitter handle. Garrett Williams gets two sacks. Schrader gets two touchdowns. Gadsden with a big score off a of pass. Uh, Schmidt misses nothing as usual. Gutsy, I know. Write it down though. Well, you wrote it down, Michael. So, and we have it, and we have we have evidence, and we also talked about it on the show. So, it you hopefully you spoke it to existence. Now, I got to be honest. I don't even like my score, but I like his score less. So, that says something about <laughs> his score, which is forty-seven to thirteen, and I hate my score. It's already written down, and I'm not changing it. Uh, you said twenty-seven to thirteen. No, 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 forty-seven to thirteen. But I don't even I don't like that score. Yeah, there's some close ones. 52 to nothing uh, at Cusalum 44. Uh, I, I, I mean, I like that score. I like this one too. 64 to nothing with how our defense is no way Wagner should score a single point. Here's the thing. Do they get, you got to, you, when, you, when you do the prediction stuff, you got to account for the possibility of some garbage time stuff, right? And, and, and that's where it gets tricky. That's why these games are the toughest, I think, to predict because you never know. What, you never know what could happen in the garbage time. Right. At Sparty Capital, 66 nothing Syracuse. Um, let's see, I got a bunch here, dude. Do you got a bunch? Yeah, yeah, I got So, Jacob Carpenter, 35-7. None of the starters play in the second half. Hopefully, some don't see the second quarter. Let's get out of this game with no more big injuries. I like it. I like it. Uh, at No Blanchard, 44, 65 to nothing. Okay? I really like this score. Uh, but it's suspect to touch, uh, but I do like it. 65 to nothing. If Wagner scores, then we have a problem. I think Tucker has a similar game to the Albany game last year and we win easily. Well, I mean, obviously I think in hope that 
there's no doubt we win easily. But, oh, I see our boy Tyler in there. Tyler's in the green room, everybody. Tyler's <laughs> in the green room. There we go. It's about the end time. Um, hey, man, do you have any close ones? There's some close ones in here. I mean, Gary Alder, 3126, Cuse. I got, I got one. Here you go. Uh, at Joe Catskill, Cuse 32, Wagner 10. Go Syracuse. That's, that's as close as I got on Twitter. Really, dude. 31 to 26 was Gary's. Let's see. There's another one in here. Mike Jones, Syracuse 42, Wagner 21. What? Come on, Mike. I know Mike. I went to high school, Mike. Um, so, yeah. Top fan, Adam Williams. Top fan. A lot against a little. Orange uh, Cruz. That's okay. all I gave. So, but he was uh, top fan, so I had to throw it out there, right? So, yeah, she did. Kyle. Kyle Demetro, 52 nothing SU. Defense held Louisville to seven. They can hold Wagner scoreless. At Cuse Warrior 44, Cuse by a billion. I had that soundbite somewhere, but I don't anymore. Um, I don't know about a billion. Might be a might be it yeah. might be tough to reach. Might run out but, of time. Yeah, might run out of time. At Nick Florek underscore Florek. I don't know if the underscore matters, but I'm, it's there. 58 to 6, orange. I like that. Okay. Now I got uh, one get, that's close to that. All right, Jerry, let's hear Turn, it. Jerry Turner, 59 to 6, Cuse. Then moved to 22 in coaches' poll and 25 in AP poll. Did you hear Coach talk about was the it coach? top 25? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not yeah. impressed, guys. So he wants to. Hey, like he said, when he was growing up, they only did the top 20. Yeah, exactly. So he, he's not impressed with the top 25. We love it. We love it because what's it been since 2018? When we went into the Notre Dame game, I think we were ranked 16th. We got our ass sent to us. Dungey got injured. Remember that? Yeah. Hey, yeah. I got one more. Go ahead. Let it All right. Here, Harry, here's your cousin. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this, and then you can kind of let them know what the rules are, right? My cousin? So, C- Craig Reichert. Oh, boy. Wagner shouldn't pose much of a threat. However, SU needs to work on the penalties and turnovers. There's no way that's my cousin. That's, that's way too insightful. Well, I mean, but the thing is, is I mean, it says to final score, it says final score predictions, and he didn't leave one. That, that is my cousin. (laughs) Maybe that is my cousin. (laughs) Uh, That's quite possible. Uh, I I can't even, guys, I can't even look. When my wife gets home, I'll look. I always forget. I can look from her phone. (laughs) Definitely your cousin. But I, but I can't, is it? Can you see his picture? Yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. I'll bet you he asked someone at work what he should put, and he never put the score. What an idiot. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. You need to screen that, screenshot that for me. Um, Will do. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, I'm just checking the green room here. Cuse is 4-0, and Owen Tyler has been on the show. Shame. Tyler's on, Tyler can jump in at any time, by the way. Tyler. You can jump in at any time. You can even give, yeah. you, you can even give you a hey, pick. Look. I want to throw in there my brother score 54-14. That's his prediction as well. So. Okay. That's not terrible. It's not terrible. No. See, I, I, I won last week, okay, with the 34-17 pick. I had, uh, I, I had I ended up with 55 total. You had 58 total. The total score of the game was 42. So um, I won. So we're 2-2. Two and two. Um, Let's see. Oh, what did I actually do to get kicked off Facebook, Mac? Wrong answers only. Oof. Look. <laughs> I can't play the wrong answers only game because I could get myself in trouble. I'd like to <laughs> I'd like to get back there. I really would, so I can uh, delete the damn thing. Uh, so anyways. Uh, <laughs> no uh, send a hog shot to Zuckerberg, Anthony. No, that's not what happened. Tyler nope. did give his score though, and we'll go we'll go out, we'll go over that in a second. But I did win, I did win, and uh, <laughs> um, I'm, that means I can either go first or defer, and I'm just going to go first because, like I said, I'm not real. I'm not real. I don't know about this score at all, man. I really don't. Th- these are the tougher games for me to pick, and they should be for you too. Uh, Anthony admitted to the hog shot to Zuckerberg. That was not me, and I have it here, and I'm going to screenshot it. Uh, so that way, in case they come after me, um, I can send that to them. Um, 
<laughs> uh, so, look, I expect this to be what we all think it should be, right? Um, Wagner stinks. They're um, very underwhelming. Their defense is atrocious. There's no way we shouldn't run up the score very quickly on them continuously. And there's no reason that shortly after maybe one series after halftime that we don't see Del Rio. That's my opinion. I don't know if it happens, but that's my opinion. I highly doubt it's close. I I hope it's not. And that might be very arrogant and very cocky of me. But I got 63 to 7, dude. I got 63 to 7. And I don't like that score. But I wrote it down earlier today, and I changed it twice, and I went back to it. Because I'm like, you know what? With my luck, me changing it's going to screw me. So I'm going to leave it. 63 to 7, Joe. I don't got much to say about it. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, my guess was going to be 56 to 10. Oh, my gosh. I had 56 to 10 at one point. I swear to God, it's crossed off right here. Damn. Okay. If Sorry. You, if you win, I mean, dude, go ahead. It's it, like you said, it's a crapshoot, right? Because these type of games, sometimes you just don't get up for it, right? Or if you do get some penalties and some turnovers and, you know, there's a slow pace of game and the, the clock's moving and stuff like that, um, then sometimes you don't, and there's no big plays like on your end as far as defense and stuff, then sometimes you're not going to get those, those points up there like that. But, um, you know, that we had a lot of predictions where it was, you know, 38 to three and then, you know, in the thirties and stuff like that. So, um, that could very well easily be some type of score as well, but I, I just don't see that. I see some guys are going to be wanting to chomp at the bit. And some of these guys, like I said, on the bench, Carlos Del Rio, Wilson, and some of these receivers and running backs and stuff, they, they want to get out there and show, show the fans and, and possibly the coaching staff what they can do. So I'm looking for, to see big plays um, really on both sides of the ball. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a touchdown maybe on all three facets of, of the game when you talk about special teams, defense, and offense. So, um, I'm right there with you. I just didn't – that 60s. I mean, I know Rutgers put up 66, but whew. I added an extra touchdown in there. But, hey, if, if we score in all facets of the game, then you're talking we probably are getting 60-something. So, we'll see. I mean, we will see. And I'm probably, you know, I probably way overshot that. And I thought about it twice, and I swear to God, I have fifty, I have fifty six ten twice on here, that's crossed off. How many times so, did you? F- I, dude, it was just, I was. It's tough. All right, I'm not. Tough. I don't even want to know. I don't yeah. even want to know. I'll okay. let you keep your routine to yourself. Yeah, just it. I, I come up with a score. I write it down. I try to stick with it. And then Probably if you write OCD it down, shit, if so you write, if, yeah, if you write it down too early, then you now I'm then I'm dwelling on. It. I'm like, oh, is that a good score? Is it a bad score? I don't like the score. I didn't like the score. I didn't like the score. I changed it to. And then you go ahead and pick it. That's fine. It's all right. We're two. And, <laughs> we're two and two. This thing's tight. This thing's tight. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's go to the green room here. And uh, if Dominic is still there, and Dominic, if you are, and you would like to unmute yourself and say your piece, by all means, go ahead. I know, I know, I know. Get, get whatever you did last time when I told you I couldn't hear you. Do that again. I don't have the air on this time. That's weird. <laughs> maybe it was, maybe it wasn't the air. N- no, I can't. We can't. There we go. You know what it is? It's uh, my uh, Bluetooth wireless charger. No, 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 no. I have the wireless charger on the back of the phone. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. That's wild. Okay. Yes. Well, it's it's probably. Uh, I'm, I won't even get into any. Kind yeah. Of don't. Let's skip that yet. part. Let's skip yeah. that part. Yeah. So, it, you, Dom, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have tech nerds saying it's uh, the the remote uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah. No, we don't need that. So real real quick, Dom. Real quick. Yeah. Is my is my is is my score too high? Sixty three to seven. Is that too much? It. I will be disappointed if we give up a touchdown in this game. We could if you have third stringers in late in the game, but I I could see them scoring 70 points. I Wagner has lost 23 games in a row. They are a former D3 school from what I heard today. The, the, there is endless possibilities about how many points. Like, do they have a running clock in college? Like, I, I'm, I'm – I'm, <laughs> Not for that. I hate to say it, right. Like, <laughs> 
like I hate to say it, but um, if our starters are in the second half, we're not playing well. I think and we do a series in the. Road. I could see. I could see a series in the second half. I don't. Schrader had a brace on it today during uh, during his uh, press availability, so I can't see him playing the second half if he's if he's got a little ankle brace on or some tape or whatever he had. So well, we'll see what um, the score is too, right? But okay, yeah. fair enough. So, but I what I want to see, regardless of the score, if if we are efficient with the first team offense and we give up some plays or or things look kind of wonky with the second and third stringers in there. I want to see like Austin Rune at at middle linebacker. I want to see what he can. I, he was such like I was excited when he signed, and I remember watching tape from him and you guys talking about him and like he's a future middle linebacker of this, you know, the three three five, and like I'm excited to see him and I want to see what the backups who we we we've only seen really like Rune plays on special teams so he could play. Like uh, Coach Ligashevsky is not going to let him play. If he's not, if he's not a player, so uh, that is what I want to see. I want to see grow depth at the positions because right now we've had four games and four starters out for the whole season. So we need to. This is a game where you just give like uh, Fuentes the, the defensive tackle, let him just play and get time and get experience and gain confidence because with Terry Lockett out, you're going to be playing a lot against NC state. So let's get, you know, let's get the, the wobbly legs, you know, the baby legs, the, 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 the newborn deer, as you know, maybe Dino would say, you know, those wobbly newborn legs, you know, out of you this game and, and get ready to, for some depth against NC state. That's what I want to see regardless of the score. So there you go. What was your score? I said it earlier. Do you remember it? Uh, it was 52 to three. Um, I'm, I, I, I didn't want it because it's Twitter. They 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 don't let you use but so many characters. I think we're going to score four touchdowns in the in the first half, twenty eight points, and then I think we'll score three with a field goal in the second half. What's uh, Del Rio Wilson do? Um, I I think he'll throw. Th- uh, hmm. What? Now you're pushing me. <laughs> hey, you're gonna make me guess. Two two TD throws and uh, wow. Allen scores on a rushing on a rushing touchdown, and uh, we we get a field goal. You know, at, at some point in the second half, because just because those guys don't don't get the reps, but I mean, our second team and our third team is better than Wagner's first team on both ends. I mean, absolutely. Like, this yeah. team is not even like I, their their defense is just. It's awful. It is yes. is really bad. Right. So where the, like Albany last year, like I mean, they had you know the the, the kid that's on, you know, uh, Florida State now, right? So at least they they even had you know they had him. They had some you know decent players, even though we killed them. But this is they don't even have that. I don't I, from from what I've read and heard, they are they they, they are in D one to make money. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, like money on on these games. Yeah, so that's, that's we're gonna get paid to have our kids' asses handed to them, right. basically. Right. Yeah. Right. All right, Dom. We appreciate right. you, buddy. You got it. Talk to you later. All right, man. Yep. Yeah. Hey, he has a point, man. No, we need to see that set. We talked about it. We need to see that second string defense in there, and I'd like to see some of those guys. And looking at that, you know, that depth chart, and you take away. The safeties, the three safeties, well, the two safety positions and the rover position, every position that we have on defense, our our second string uh, player is either a retro freshman or a freshman. Um, and we even have some retro freshmen in starting. So um, we're definitely going to see them. And that's going to be definitely experience that they need for sure. We're going to see the Austin Runes and the Anwan Sparrows. And I want to see some, Flint- some Marshall Falk. That's what I want to see. Marshall Falk or Malcolm? Uh, Ma- Marshall Falk. Yeah, yeah. Mar- I'd like to see Marshall Falk too. Ma- yeah. No, I think he's a little past his prime. Yeah, it um, could be. I don't know if against yeah. uh, against, uh, against uh, Wagner might be might be prime time. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that I spoke about Amari Hatcher as well. Looks like he's climbing up the depth chart because he's behind. Well, he's tied with it's an Amari Hatcher or Demarcus Adams at, uh, behind Damian Alford. So that does seem like a player that is starting to make his his way up the depth chart and hopefully get some reps here in the field soon. 
Okay. All right. Well, Michael, come on. This is your, this is your chance. I don't, I didn't see. Did I see anything from if not now when eighty four? Even if you wanted like to come on to explain your Twitter handle, I think everybody would love that <laughs> too. Uh, and just like that. All right, Michael from the green room and North Carolina. Unmute yourself and say your piece. What's up? You hear me? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> Sorry, I know you hate that question. <laughs> well, usually <laughs> usually you say, can, I, can you hear me? And I can't, but I, I can because I respond. So it's, Dude, I got my it's new mixed messages. So I'm, I'm good to go. Okay. All right. What, um, what do you got? At, it, first of all, explain the Twitter handle because it's a long time right, so, mystery for me. So it's uh, from a Jimmy World song. Oh, God. Okay. Do you remember them? Yeah, you know, 90s. I it when I was in seventh grade, and I never got rid of it. That's what, literally What year did you graduate? Uh, 02. Oh, geez, I'm crow. I thought Jimmy World was like back in my high school days, like 90s. Is no, it, no, no, no. They were early 2000s. Were they? Okay. 99, right. 2000, something like that. Okay, well, we're still pushing 20 years. So, okay, well, that makes sense. All right. Um, I've had it ever since I can remember, and I just... Never got rid of it. I don't know. Okay. Well, that's cool. At least I know where it comes from now. I'm going to look it up when I leave here. Um, <laughs> okay. What do you got? I didn't see you respond on the Twitter. So. Oh, yeah. I was in Zoom meetings like all day. It was terrible. Sounds awful. Uh, let's see. I kind of want to go in the 60s for us, but it's like they were saying, uh, if we get some second and third string guys out there, which would be way more beneficial. I, I wouldn't even care if we put up like 42, but let's say 42 to six. And that's where I was regretting my decision. So Why? Um, 40, because I think I went way too high, but oh. I said it. So I stayed with it and um, me and Joe are tied. So it's okay. I can sacrifice where am I on one. this list. You were keeping track of mine. Yeah, I kept track of yours for the uh, for the Louisville game, and then after that, I kind of I kind of got lost in the mix. <laughs> well, I, I put them. I put them. This is the only one I haven't posted. So I know. I well, no. To be fair, to be fair, I have all of yours except for one. And I'm looking at oh, my Dom's sheet. Dom's got a great question in the green room thing. He said, uh, "Does Tyler have any eligibility left?" <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good That's question. That's a great question. It Where is. is Tyler? Did he talk already? Yeah, we could suit him. No, he didn't. He's being what? bash. He's being bashful tonight. We could suit Tyler up though, and just throw him out there. He don't even need to know who it. You know, and just throw a number on him. Give him, give him double zero. There you go. Uh, <laughs> no, I have, I have most of the scores written down. I have to go back and look, but I will, I will do that. Just like I said, I will get the trivia questions. And uh, I love which it. I, We're which getting I more and more yet. people in every week. I love this. I know. I really like it, too. That's why I really want everybody to uh, sign up and get in there, because as actually in my in Joe, Tyler, in my group text, we were talking about um, the Spotify live app and how much it's a game changer for podcasting, because obviously doing it live, there's only there's there's there was no way to ever do it. And we tried numerous things before this app came out and um you know, yeah, because the behold. app's relatively new, right? Yeah, well, I think we got on it. Uh, they actually sponsored the show, and we got on it pretty quickly. I think it was last year or maybe the end of the year before, but it was during the COVID stuff, and I remember it was just, you know, a situation where it just it's still not really that popular, to be honest. And I don't know why, but um, they're relatively new. It was something else. And it got bought out by Spotify. So anyway, you know, uh, you know who we need to get in here is Geo. I know. I talked to Geo earlier this week. I'm not going to say what we talked about, but he heard me say something on the show, and he uh, he texted me. But Geo is trying to get to the Wake Forest game, and would love to meet him down there. I think that's November 19th. And I just bought my tickets. Did you? Yep. Nice. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Joe. What's your status? For wait, um, TBD. TBD. Okay. Joe, you told me you were going. Oh, dude, Michael, <laughs> you know not to I'm listen to him. Up. Come on. I don't even care. He told me he was going. <laughs> you better show said, up and pick his I, ass up. I bought, 
and I bought my tickets immediately because Joe said he was going. See that? Oh, no, no, oh, no. Oh, man, Joe from the Cuse Militia is going to be here. I'm buying tickets. That's oh, right. Oh, man. I'm gonna, Come I on. got a celebrity sighting. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the last I checked, no, Joe I'm does going. nothing on Saturdays. So he goes to the dump. Yeah, he, he paints his nails. Uh, all I right. definitely don't do that. My, <laughs> <laughs> Michael, final thoughts? Uh, I don't know, man. Those injuries are making me nervous. But, you know, uh, did you, you guys listen to Baber's uh, post? Uh, we're, we're, yeah, yeah. You'll, see, you'll hear that on the front end. We, we did a little okay. thing with it, yep. Yeah, because he was talking like every game. They're what are they four? Averaging four one players. a game. Yeah, yeah, averaging one a game. That's just that's not good. It's not but, good. Um, it, you know, I think it'll give a chance uh, chance for the uh, you know younger players to kind of step up a little bit and see what's what's going on, and oh, hopefully it doesn't affect us that bad. Yeah, yeah it's going to have to exactly. <laughs> but. <laughs> But yeah, I just I just hope we can you know get through it. And I mean, he was even talking about somebody coming back. Who was it? Well, there was a couple of them. I um, oh, that's right, we weren't live. Um, uh, Carter Carter left yeah, the game, and McDonald Jihad Carter. Left, or McDonald yeah. didn't even play, so they're talking about those guys possibly being back. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. So Check. That, that'll be good. I mean, we'll get we'll get those guys back, and hopefully they can you know um, do some good things. But I don't know. It's going to be a massacre, you know. Uh, so we're not going to really learn a whole lot, but um, I, I'm really looking forward to the next one. That's what I'm no. looking forward to. Yeah, and no, actually, that is like this game is like I don't like games like this game because we're expected to blow them out, and you want to just see good stuff. And when you don't, um, or if you see an injury, or you know, then it just makes you super nervous. So I hate watching games that we're supposed to win like this. It's super nerve wracking until we, I know. you know, I just ultimately get a lead. Hurt, man. Exactly, yeah. that's Biggest the main concern. Thing. Yeah, uh, Michael, appreciate man. Appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, love you, man. You guys. Stay, yeah, n- yeah, big time. So hey, look, stay in tune. We got the nightcap coming up right now. Okay. Ooh, I like it. All right, we'll talk to you later, bud. All right. All right. Good Bye. Talk to you. Bye. All right, one more, one more to finish this thing off. The one, the only, Tyler Morona. He's taking a shower. What the hell you doing? Oh, he's outside. I hear crickets. I hear crickets. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Tyler Morona, uh, Houston, Texas, 28 years old. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Uh, big fan of the show. Um, first time, long time, obviously. Um, you know. He's on a walk. What, You're on a walk, aren't you, Tyler? I am. I am. Yeah, down down here in, in the swamp of uh, Houston, Texas. But, um yeah, what's up, guys? How are you? We're awesome. It's so nice I'm to good, see you in the buddy. green room. We really appreciate you um, you coming and checking it out. But most of all, um, being pressured into to requesting to speak, and we're glad you did. <laughs> it was peer pressure, well, I gotta Joe. Address the, uh, yeah, no, I got to address the eligibility allegations here. <laughs> um, I have – there is no – like there's no toughness left in my body unfortunately if i went out there right i would get folded so quickly like i my knees are rickety i climb up the stairs and it sounds like an 81 buick starting up like i have nothing <laughs> left in this tank even against but, wagner tyler man let me tell you something i'm not 20 years old anymore but when i was this is a type of game where i would just be like look i got four good shots i need to take on the quarterback or some other human being that's not wearing orange and, uh, you know, I'd get my four and then, you know, you, you tap the next guy in and you say, Hey, you know, you go get your four. And then it just kind of keeps going from there. So, uh, I like that idea. Those days have, have come and gone, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, this is my, so my best friend growing up in elementary school in Los Angeles, he actually, when we played them my sophomore year, um, uh, I think that was like one of the first times we played them as a matchup. He was actually their kicker and, um, he ended up transferring, back to a junior college and then going to kick at uh, Cal Berkeley after that, you realize quickly you made a mistake, but um, <laughs> to Dominic's point, they are like a performing arts school. So like, it's all like theater kids and whatnot. He said the football team hates their life going to Wagner. So I don't blame them. I mean, they're terrible. <laughs> like what, what it looks like 30 in a row. I get it. You know, 23. I had to go to, yeah. So 23 in a row. I get it. You know, you got to go to theater practice after you go to football practice at Wagner. It's not a good situation. But um, yeah, so throwing on the tights. One thing that I would look for in this game is the first play. 
uh, Del Rio Wilson gets in the game. Look for him to take a shotgun snap. Pretty, pretty, pretty depthy drop back, and he's going to air that thing out as far as he possibly can. I think he's going to go for another kill shot immediately. He's got an arm. He showed that. He does. We saw it already. I love his arm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he's going to have yeah. a little bit of time to, you know, sit back there and kind of patrol. I really agree with everybody, what everybody else said, which is um, this is this is the, the scrimmage for the depth. You know, this is kind of where yep. you get to see, mm-hmm. um, you know, who's who's up and coming. And these are always the games that you love because you get to go see, um, you know, who's going to be our next, uh, you know, Garrett Williams, perhaps. Or, you know, one of these guys will flash. We'll get excited and they'll have something to kind of hang on for not just this year, but for, you know, hopefully a couple years. Uh, Tyler's Tyler's Spotify Live profile picture, the Garrett Williams pick against UVA. Which one? Oh, the big, okay. the big one against say. UVA. Yeah, uh, the Louisville one was good, too. Player. He's my, I think he's my favorite player in football right now. Maybe Justin Herbert of the Chargers, number one here. Oh, my gosh. He's Watch our him best off. player by far. Like, yeah. Even, like, he is so good. I don't think people realize how good he is. Coach talked about after the Purdue game. Like, you get no help being a corner. Deuce and Garrett are unbelievable for being college uh, cornerbacks. They're playing at an NFL level. That's 20, 21 years. I mean, it's... They're, they're doing stuff that's so high level and unbelievable. And um, to Garrett's point, you know, I love that he got on the mic after the game too and was like, hey, it was a it was a huge mistake that you thought the game would come down to UB. Like, that's just the type of guy that he is. So, I mean, I'm a ride or die fan. I'll tell him right to his face. I'm your biggest fan. You got you to score, Tyler? I got to get a score before you go. I would say kind of something close to what I put in the chat. I think that um, we don't really score that much after halftime because we're going to have to beat Wagner running 10 of the simplest plays possible because we're obviously not going to show anything before NC State. We're obviously not going to you know, dust off a trick play. You know, like nope. We're going right. to have to do it the old-fashioned way, which is, and this is where I told you I have no eligibility left. I have really no desire left to go play football. But the one thing as a, as a lineman, that is why I strapped up in the first place is the best feeling in the world is when you move a man from point A to point B against his will. And I think we're just going to do that this game. We haven't seen it in the past couple of games by our offense, offensive line. But I think that we're just going to blow these guys off the ball and we're, we're going to run right up there, right up the gut. So that's what I got. About 42 8, 42 9, something like that. 40. You got 41 8 in the green room. So we- that's because Syracuse has the weirdest scores I've ever seen for final scores. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a, yep. you got a, a safety and two field goals in there. I don't know how we get there, but it's just there's something tells me it's going to be a weird score. All right. Like, wasn't last year like 62 20 or something like that against Albany? The primary serves. Like, yeah, you know, it was again, something like a that. Weird score. You know, it's just like it never is just like a round even, you know, 42 nothing. If that happens, egg on my face, but I just don't see it. Okay, so forty-two to eight. Let's that, do it. Okay, forty-two to eight. Tyler, bro. Tyler. Ty- Tyler. Joe's I, got a question. I was just gonna say, hey, to your point with Garrett Williams, um, you know, you kind of gotta have that attitude if you're gonna be a corner, right? Right. I mean, going against those receivers and stuff, and seeing some of those, some of those interceptions that he's had, the Louisville one and the Virginia one, those are not like normal interceptions, right? Like. Those are situations where that's not even his guy, and he sees the whole play while guarding his guy, and then goes over and does the other person's job at the same time, right? Like that's right. that's I mean that's just crazy. He comes up. He I don't know if he's missed an open field tackle um, on his own so far this year. So, and realistically, the big play to um, old boy there, Charlie Jones in Purdue. I mean, he kind of just tripped over his own feet. I, I mean, that might have been an interception or a, a pass deflection if he doesn't fall. So. Well, um, I'm, he tackles him right where he's at, right? I mean that that was that was kind of a freak thing, like you said. But right. I mean the, the Louisville play, that's a top ten play. I'm like as a defensive back, he was covering the entire field. Like he was like, no, I've yep. got this half of the field, which is the fifty to the end zone. Like no one, no one's catching a ball. That no one, no one does that. Like Cisco was good. But he got to play behind everybody. Garrett Williams starts on one side, and then he ran to the complete opposite side and picked it off. Like, no one does that. No, that was crazy. And the catch was awesome, too, especially for a defensive back. 
And shout out to Cisco because I believe he's a starter at Jacksonville right now. So that's awesome. And and yeah. succeeding, yeah, thriving at that. Yep. So, um, I think he yep. had a pick this weekend if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think he had a pick this week or last week. Something like that. But uh, yeah, man, good to talk to you guys. I, I'm loving the show as always. You know, I'm I'm, I'm one of your biggest advocates. kids. I hope you know that. Um, yeah, it's good. Isn't it fun to have a couple wins under our belt at this point? Changes you know, changes this, everything. Oh, yeah. You know, we get this one, and at that point, I'd say it's, you know, a near lock. We make a bowl, so then we're now just kind of deciding how far are we really going to go in this postseason. I think that's a really interesting uh, place to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Way at a better, di- or different place than we thought <laughs> in the beginning of the year, that's for <laughs> no, sure. Certainly. Well, you know, the dinner table is uh, it's in a good mood tonight, you know, and then hopefully yes, one. Tyler, we love you, buddy. Stay in touch, all right? Yes, sir. All right, bud. Let it Peace. Um, what a awesome fan feedback segment. I would have to say that as Tyler with the nightcap there, that was pretty awesome. And that was the most calls we've taken since we started doing the green room thing. And Joe, I sent you a text message. I want you to end the show by reading that picture, that screenshot I sent you. Just read it. Don't proofread it. But I just need you to pull it up and read it out loud for everybody to hear. Okay. Can you do that for me? He's proofreading it. And I <laughs> yes, told you not I'm to sorry. proofread it. No. I need you yes. to just read it straight up. Okay? I got it. All right. Go ahead. Nana's going, guys. She's moving, <laughs> not show, not, not. She's moving, not show some, not y'all up or not. Oh, my God. Do it again. Nana's going, guys. <laughs> She's moving, not show some not y'all up or not. Nah. Yeah. Words of wisdom right there from me on Twitter. Appreciate it. Now remember. That was you? That was me. Uh, <laughs> Nana's going. Nana's going. She's going to trudge the stairs. Will you? I sure hope so. All right. I think that's going to do it for us. I think we'll end on that note. Um, I have no shame in ending on that note. Joe, I appreciate you playing along for once. Joe, Joe not really really easy to, to get to play along, but he's in a good mood. This is what, this is what four wins in Syracuse football does <laughs> with Joe. The dude's all smiles, and I got to say, I love it. So with that, you guys, we appreciate all of you guys so much. Uh, a lot of awesome DMs this week after all these shows and all these wins. And I'll tell you what, fills my heart. I love it. I really do. Appreciate all of you. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out of here. Peace.